How's it going guys and welcome back here for another episode with some pot limit on my content. Today I want to talk about 5 card PLO. This is a game that has become more and more popular over the last 2 years I would say. And when you look at the biggest sites, for example GG Poker, you can see that a lot of the PLO action actually has moved to five card. Let me quickly show you what's happening, for example, in the GG Poker lobby. Um, this is the PLO section of the site, and I now filtered for PLO five card, and you will see that from the lowest stakes up until 510, that everything is basically running and that there are a lot of, a lot of people in there. If we compare this to PLO four card, you can see that at the lower stakes, like four card is still a bit more popular. But even there, it's not a huge difference. But especially here, like five card is just very attractive these days, I would say. A lot of people are playing it. And that means that it's not only professionals, of course, but also a lot of recreational players. You can imagine that if there is one more card for every player, that that attracts people who like to gamble also. Because, I mean... <laughs> More cards, more fun in a way, right? Like you can, people just get the idea that they can play more hands in a way. So that's sort of what happens and what draws a lot of the recreational players and gamblers also to five card PLO. Now, do I say that you have to jump into five card and ignore four card? Not necessarily. I think there's still a lot of opportunity also in four card, for example, but I think it's something to be open-minded about, maybe try out whether you believe there's opportunities out there because there definitely are opportunities, guys. Now, GG Poker is only one of the operators that offers it. Like, you can also play it on PokerStars, as, I, as far as I know. You can also play it on a lot of the app games. There's a lot of five-card action there. So, plenty of opportunities out there, really. And today, I'm going to jump into turn and river strategy, actually, for five-card PLO. Now, this has always been, like, some sort of, I mean... There wasn't much information available about it. Anyway, five card solvers only came on the market, I think like one or two years ago, like not that long ago, really. So it's all pretty new and therefore there's a lot to learn. So today I want to show you guys some insights into it. I'm using the five card PLO trainer, which allows you to train and browse pre and post slop solutions for five card PLO. And um, yeah. We're gonna focus on turn and river strategy. So let's get into it, guys. I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. So I am going to the post slop section, top left. And we're selecting a situation where we know that there are turns and rivers available. At the moment, not every spot in the game has turns and rivers in our software, but some do. For example, Early position versus big blind. Single raise pot. This is a situation where, first of all, we have a lot of board textures available. If you scroll down here, you can see that there's a lot of flops you can work with. And if there's a double arrow behind it, it means that there's also turn and rivers available. So I'm going to select unpaired flops. And I want to see unpaired flops that also have turns and rivers available. So you will see the list. What board do we want to work with for today, guys? Does it really matter? Uh, I'm going to pick this one, Jack-10-6, a very dynamic board, always interesting. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select early position and just show the flop strategy for this player. And then once we know more about the flop strategy, we'll, we'll jump into turn and river strategy and train a bit there to... Yeah, try to learn something about it, guys, because it's a very unexplored area still of the game. So, first things first, what you see is we are opening up the buckets, which basically breaks down all the hands in your range, basically, and segments them with into categories with similar characteristics. So, for example, all hands with a set are on top. Two pairs next, one pair hands, etc. So from strong to weak. And you will see that sets, for example, we have sets 8.12%. And we're betting sets 77% of the time. All good. This is our entire range. So far, so good. We can learn the flop. But, I mean, the flop is only so interesting, right? It's only a small part of the hand. We have pre-flop, flop, and then turn on river. So, 
how much fun is it to actually play through the entire hand? So we're going to click on bet three quarter pot, which is the sizing that we're using. Then we click on call. And you will now see this pop up appearing with all sorts of different turn transitions that are available. If it's highlighted, that means that turn card is available. If it's grayed out, sort of, that turn card is not available. And we did that on purpose, basically because a lot of the turn cards they play very similar for example it doesn't really matter whether the turn is a deuce of hearts or a three of hearts the strategy will be very similar so therefore we have a selection but we're gonna work with that so let's i don't know let's pick any turn really for example the four of spades on the four of spades the out of position player is checking his full range no leading and then in position can double barrel for three quarter pot or he can check back now the first thing you see again is the buckets on the right side and these buckets will help you to understand the overall strategy better these are pre-generated basically automa automatically by the software so you don't have to worry about that yourself and again you will see the categories based from strong to weak so sets on top and our double barreling sets always so if you decide to bet any set on the flop then on this four you're always going to double barrel if we click on range you will see that your overall range strategy on this turn, for example, is almost 50-50. Checking back 50, 49, betting 50.6. 50, 50 and you can just scroll through this to basically find and look for the hand that you want to work with. So, for example, I mean, let's say we would have bet the flop with ace-ace... I don't know. Ace-ace-king. 6-5. With the nut flush draw. Let's say this would be a hand that we're betting on the flop with. Well, if you would have bet this hand on the flop, then on the turn, this is a very much a split strategy. So this hand is checking back 50, betting 50% 50 almost. I can imagine if we make this a little bit better. So let's say it would be this hand, ace is king, seven, five with the open ender that we're betting more. You will see that this hand is actually betting pure. So that is pretty interesting. So... What you can do is you can look into one hand, you can use the strength buckets, which is what we see on top here to jump into a specific category of hand that you want to work with. What you can also do is you can click on terrain and the training feature basically opens up this window and then you can train either your entire range or one of the subcategories from the buckets and that allows you basically to do training for the turn and again you can do this for any turn card that is available let's play through a couple of hands guys um first things first this one i mean a very powerful hand i would say i think it's a very easy bet betting is correct you will see the hand appearing on the top right here in the result window you will see the actions the evs for every decision and we're gonna click on bet Second hand again. And appears. Evie's attached to it. Uh, bet. Overpair. Not flush draw, not gutter. We did bet and get cold. Now, do we want to continuously bet? Probably. But apparently not. You will see that this is actually quite a big mistake in a way. Like. There's also an EV loss in the result window, and this shows that by betting, we lost the EV in this GTO simulation, basically, of 0.91 big blinds. So quite a bit. Um, next up, we have a hand that we definitely want to bet. Again, a hand that we want to bet. And you will see that I mean, this is also a bet. I would say this is also a bet. So training, very helpful. Very intuitive and quick to play through a lot of hands. So what I'm going to do now, guys, is move into the river and show you what happens there. So we now know that we're, we can play a training session on the turn. We go through our entire range. We can use the buckets. But what happens if we actually double barrel the turn? So we bet and get called again. And you will now see that all the rivers are available. So for every turn that you have available, all rivers are then available afterwards. So 
Let's say the river would be a six. On the six, we're going to click on check for out of position. I mean, we could also let him bet. Doesn't matter. We can do, we can make a decision ourselves for that. But we're going to let him check. And then we're going to go to early position and see how this player is playing his strategy. So the range window opens up. And here you can see that the imposition player is checking back 50% or so, betting half pot 7.6% and then betting full pot 41.8. So a lot of potting if we bet. And I think that is because we are very polarized at this point. Like we bet flop and bet turn, call twice. So we have all the very best hands in our range. And we want to leverage that by betting as large as possible and adding in as many bluffs as possible. And our opponent basically has more of the condensed range. So he has a lot of medium strong hands that now are bluff catchers. So we're potting. And you can use the strength buckets again if you want. And this allows you basically to again to open up this view and see how your range is being played based on characteristics. So quads play Half pot mostly. Pretty interesting, but I mean, we don't really have quads very often. If you look into boats, almost 30% of the time we have a boat and almost all of them are just going to pot it. So execute by betting large. Trips. So if you end up on a river with 6x, you are basically going to do a lot of potting 67% of the time. And then two pairs and one pair hands are more going to be quite passively. You want to be selective there. And uh, your bluffs will basically come from that region. Um, okay, so back to the range. Open up the training window. We're going to do a little bit of river training as well, guys. Again, keep in mind that we that there are now Turner River solutions available for several nodes, right? So this is early position versus big blind single race pot. You can also jump into button versus big blind single race pot. You can jump into three bet pots, small blind versus button, small blind versus early position, three bet pots as well. And more solutions will get added in the near future. So, but this is already a good starting point with a lot of options. Anyway, guys, let's get into it. So we bet twice and get cold. Like, do we want to value bet this on the river? I mean, I'm not sure to be honest. Maybe. The fact that we have ace, king, king. I would say ace, ace is a better value bet than ace, king, king. Because then we can get called by kings. I don't think we should bet for a large sizing. What is the goal there? Do we get called by queens or jack x? I'm not sure. Maybe it's a half pot. No, it's actually a mistake. And again, you can see the results showing up there. Ace, king, queen, jack, eight. Seems like a check. Ajax985 seems also like a check. Uh, this is kind of interesting. So we have a 10 blocker, but we also block the rep and the flush draw. Do we want to turn our hand into a bluff, guys? We can push out King X, King King. We can push out Jack X. If we bet, I think we should pot it. The fact that we have all the blockers really and all the miss draws ourselves doesn't make it great, I think. So I would say we're just gonna give up. You can see there's still a bit of EV in the check, right? Can queen jack 10? Kind of interesting. I mean, jack 10, maybe this is a pot, right? Yeah, this is a pot. So we're we're potting there. We're potting there. And that's, of course, a bluff, right? This can queen jack 6. Pot it. Uh, easy check. Queen, 9876. We saw that 6x is always betting. So the question is, do we want to bet large or half pots? I think half pot is fine. It's a mistake, but the EV is like very, very close, really. Is this king 98? Seems like a check. Uh, bet it definitely. Question is, what sizing half pot? Okay, guys. Um, the idea of this video really is to make all of you aware of the opportunities that are out there in 5-card PLO. There is a lot of action these days. And it's 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 really a fun game, guys. It's 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 super it's super interesting to see like 
so many people in a game where there is little information and knowledge out there. Even the, the best players in the game, they are probably not very good at the moment. Just because it's so new, right? So keep that in mind that there's a lot of opportunities out there. Black Friday this year, November 25th. There's a massive sale and discount on this product. Check it out if you want to learn more about it. And that's going to be it, guys. Hope you enjoyed this episode and also jumping into our software. Super fun to play Turns and Rivers. And uh, yeah, get into it if you want to learn more about 5Card. Guys, subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. Also, head over to PLOMastermind.com if you want to learn more about this product. Guys, catch you guys in the next one over and out. And see you soon. Bye-bye.